My name's Keith Horner of Rotoloop Systems, and today I'm going to show you uh, one of our standard lubrication systems. We design and build many different types of lubrication systems, and the most common system we supply are the no control, cycle control, and full control systems. All the operational details of these three systems can be downloaded from the QR code on the system backplate or the enclosure. The most common systems we supply are full control and cycle control options. The systems we are illustrating here is a full control system mounted on a stainless steel backplate. Most of our lubrication systems have similarities on how they operate with various options on the way the system is controlled. Options are available for pumps with six, 12 or 30 litre reservoirs. The system here has a six litre perspect reservoir and the 12 litre option is a much bigger all steel reservoir and the 30 litre is an all stainless steel enclosure with an inbuilt 30 litre reservoir. The standard six and 12 litre reservoirs can be mounted inside powder coated or stainless steel enclosures on request. We also offer systems that monitor oil flow and the oil can also be independently controlled. The system we have here is a full control system mounted on a stainless steel backplate, complete with normally closed solenoid valve, 24 volt DC, pump with cycle control, inline pressure gauge, filler filter, pressure switch, low level switch, six litre reservoir, PDUs, positive displacement units or injectors, air regulators with gauge, mixing manifold and DC controller. The cycle control does not have this DC controller. This system has two outlets. We can supply systems with multiple outlets to feed multiple rotor loops from the same system. This full control system has a separate 24 volt DC controller and this requires a 24 volt DC supply whilst the conveyor is operating. This 24 volt DC needs to be a minimum of five amps. If the power supply is insufficient, then the pump will indicate PSU on the cycle controller screen and the system will not operate. The DC controller will be programmed to run and dwell the pump and air solenoid valve for set periods. These parameters will depend on the lubricant required to lubricate the chain. These times are fully adjustable, so the lubricant being delivered onto the chain can be increased or decreased at any time. During a system's run period, the pump will cycle on and off. This means the pump will pressurize and depressurize as the system runs. The cycle frequency of the pump is set at the pump cycle controller. We generally factory set these to five seconds on and five seconds off, meaning six cycles per minute. The controller has a retentive memory, so the conveyor stops, then the controller will also stop and retain the settings and start up where it finished off. So this is the cycle controller on the pump itself. Uh, we can change the pump cycle times by pressing the two arrows on the keypad, like so. And there we have T1, T2 and T3. It's factory set for five seconds for T1 T2 is the time off, which is five seconds, and T3 is the time we want to see a pressure signal from the pump when the pump runs, and that is preset at five seconds. If we want to alter these so that we get more cycles um, or less cycles per minute, we can adjust these parameters with the keys. So I can change that to two seconds, I'll leave the T3 
and change that to two seconds. Now we have the pump on for two seconds and off for two seconds. When we're happy with that, press enter. Each cycle will mean that the PDU will deliver one preset amount of oil. Each injector has an adjustable output and can be adjusted from 0.01 to 0.5 cc's. These are set halfway to approximately 0.25 cc's at the factory. With the factory settings, the amount of oil being delivered from each PDU per minute would be 0.25 cc's times six, which is one and a half cc. When the DC controller tells the pump to operate, the pump will start to cycle and the air solenoid valve will open. The lubricant will mix with the air feeds and the system will deliver an air oil mixture to the connected rotor lubes. The air pressure can be regulated by the air regulators. The air pressure does not need to be too high as we only want the air to assist the lubricant onto the chain like a spit to avoid mist. Generally, the air pressures are set at around 10 to 25 PSI, depending on the length of pipe runs to the rotor lubes and the type of lubricant being applied. When commissioning the system, we need to fill the reservoir correctly. If the level is too low, the system will alarm. F1 for low level or F5 to say the system has not pressurized correctly. On startup, after the reservoir has been filled, when the system runs, it may fault as the pressure switch may not see oil pressure as the feed line is priming. In this instance, you would have to reset the pump and operate the pump until it starts to cycle. On installation, the pipe runs to the rotor lubes would normally be in six millimeter OD pneumatic pipe. Larger pipes can be used for larger distances. Obviously, depending on the operating conditions, the pipe work may have to be in steel, copper or stainless steel. Mount the rotor loop in the correct position with the red dot next to the chain. Some rotor loops have one inlet and some have two inlets. If two inlets, both of these have to be connected to the rotor loop system. For more information, consult the instruction manual or visit rotorlube.com.